If you had five interviews, your MCAT score is not a problem. Ask Dr. Gray pre-med Q&A brought to you by Blueprint MCAT. How are you today? Good. How are you? I am great. What can I help you with? Okay. So I'm kind of in a unique and tough position. Um, So I have applied this cycle and I'm waitlisted for five medical schools right now um, after applying. And my biggest thing, in my opinion, and I've been told um, by other medical schools is my MCAT score. Okay. Um, And so I'm kind of wondering when would be an appropriate time to potentially start resetting because I think that's my biggest thing on my application that I can improve on. Interesting. Um, So, and I know I could be accepted as late as like June or July. So I don't want to just sit here and not study or I don't know. So I just wanted your advice. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting. I would, I would tell you if you had five interviews, is that how many interviews you had? Yeah. If you had five interviews, your MCAT score is not a problem. Okay. Now, just, your MCAT I, score may be a problem for the schools that you didn't get an interview at, but for the schools where you interviewed, they obviously liked your MCAT score enough. Now, maybe kind of post-interview, your interview didn't go well enough, and they were hoping maybe your MCAT score was yeah. better. So uh, there's kind of a two-prong approach we'll, we'll take on this one. But, but I think, first off, your MCAT score is probably good enough. Now, can, mm-hmm. can it be better? Of course. What, what is your MCAT yeah. score? So I took it in 2019 and I got a 506 and then I took it again in 2020 and I got a 505. Okay. So I was scoring substantially higher on the practice test. So not that it matters, that matters, but I was shocked by my score. So yeah. Wouldn't it be awesome if like for the, the double AMC exams, at least those practice full length scores also went to the medical school so they could see yeah. like 510, 515 on double AMC full length one, two, three, four, and then yeah. just test anxiety or whatever happened. Yeah. Um, that, that would be interesting. The, obviously the double AMC has that data. I think we should, yeah. we should start a petition to, for that full length <laughs> data to go up. Um, yeah. So I think that you should be looking forward to the next application cycle. And and let's not think in terms of let's rush an, a nether MCAT yeah. just potentially to affect our chances this current cycle, trying yeah. to come off of a wait list. I don't think that's the right way to look at this because your number one goal should be doing better on the MCAT and not – take another MCAT really quickly to potentially come up a wait list, like week one of medical school. Um, Yeah, it wasn't for the wait list. It was more so for the next application cycle. I just don't want to be naive and know I'm going to get in because so many people tell me you have five, five schools. And I'm like, I don't want to just sit here on the same score. So that's where I'm. So, so there's, and this is like a catch 22 for a lot of students is, yeah, do I spend the money to register? Do I spend the money on potentially different prep material? Yeah. Only to come off a wait list two months later sure. and, and all of that money would be wasted. Mm-hmm. I would rather you waste money, but be prepared just in case, exactly. right? Yeah. It, it's best case scenario is you get off a wait list two minutes before you hit submit on registering for another exam. This is this is a kind of a big problem that I have with the double AMC is if you are accepted off of a wait list in May or June, after you've already submitted your next application, yeah. the double AMC should say, congratulations, here's your money back for your primary application. You obviously don't need to apply this cycle. Yeah. But of course, they don't do that. They say, thank you for your donation to our nonprofit, <laughs> where we already have uh, $300 million of net assets. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. So anyway, <laughs> that's just a random yeah. tangent that I have with the, the double AMC. Um, uh, so I, I think register, let's let's just assume, right? Best case scenario is you get in. Let's assume this application cycle was a wash, unfortunately. I think mm-hmm. y- you just need to be head down what's next. And if you think it's your MCAT yeah. score, great. Uh, obviously, a 506 is not a wonderful MCAT score. Uh, it's not horrible, but it's not great. Yeah. It's, it's not going to open a ton of doors for you. 
Yeah. Um, and so definitely I think putting full focus on that MCAT score would be great. The, the, the question though that I have is you got five interviews. And so there's, there's obviously something in your application that schools like. And yeah. my guess is that you didn't do well in your interviews. How did you prepare okay. for your interviews? I read your book and I took <laughs> a lot of your advice, which yeah. I would have done all of the mistakes that you pointed out. Like yeah. I took all of your advice and I was actually complimented on my interviewing skills. Okay. Um, so I felt that they went well. Okay. Um, and some of the schools that I interviewed with, they said that it's rolling admissions, but they kind of wait until, like one school said specifically March 15th, they wait to interview all of the applicants and then they make a decision. Okay. And so I guess I'll have more insight in a week or two. Okay. Um, but I was actually complimented on my interview skills. Okay, and then good. And the schools um, actually allowed me to do like a follow-up Zoom to kind of talk about why I got waitlisted. And they said the only thing that we could point out is your MCAT. Okay. There was really other things so that's where i'm it okay. is it's a catch too yeah okay I could've, so, I could've so likely the mcat not your interview which is good um it's it's always frustrating yes. though it's like you you gave me an interview you liked my mcat good enough i know the the question is when when was your last mcat when did you get that score in um last june last june so before the interviews were handed out Oh yeah. So they yeah. they knew that five oh five. It wasn't like that score came back January oh. of twenty twenty one after oh, oh, yeah. your interviews and they're yeah. like, Yeah, it's not good enough. Now you're gonna be waitlisted. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, and that's, half that's the, frustrating. The interview asked me why did you even retake the MCAT? That's a comp <laughs> I mean, five oh six, I could have done better, but they said, Why did you even retake it? And I said yep. I just wanted to have a more competitive score yeah. and then obviously didn't yeah. do so well. So Yeah. Yeah, because Student yeah. Doctor Network said a 506 will not get me into medical school. Yeah. And it's just, yeah, it, it unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yeah, that's that's the problem. Um, so the, the question is, as you move forward with the next application cycle, what are you going to do differently with your MCAT? Because you got a 506, a 505, we got to do something different this time to get I know. 510 plus. Well, yeah. So I used the Kaplan course the first time, which wasn't my favorite, to be completely honest. Um, yeah. I was also studying my senior year of college with a full schedule and all that. Um, the second time around, I kind of did the same thing. I used UWorld, which was extremely helpful, and some of the next step materials. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to use, because I listen to your podcast, and I wanted to use like the next step blueprint prep. Yep. Blueprint but again, now. Yeah. Like, I don't want to pay eighteen hundred dollars. I my thing is I would I was kind of trying to aim for like the July seventeenth date. Okay. I don't know what is the latest to kind of take the MCAT. Um so I would start studying mid April. I just didn't want to pay eighteen hundred dollars for MCAT prep or a course or something and then get in and then not get that yeah. money back as well. So that's where I'm at too. So. I, I think, number one, reach out to Blueprint. Tell them I told you to reach out because they, they may be, um, they're, they're much friendlier than the AMC, And so they may go, okay, you got in, congratulations. M maybe it's not the full amount back, but maybe they give you something back. Um, I, I don't know for sure, but you, you could try that. I, I think courses are wonderful. At the end of the day, the question is, is it course content that you need like do you need to learn amino acids one more time and in a different way right i love blueprint their exams are great their their content is great but is there maybe more focus where instead of a blueprint course you're just more focused on the blueprint full-length exams to where you spend a couple hundred dollars on their 10 pack of full-length exams yeah. where you can take their full-length exams you get the analytics on the back end to see from a strategy standpoint, hey, 20% of the questions I miss, I got right to begin with, but then I changed my answer because I second-guessed myself. Or 80% of the questions that I miss in the uh, chem phys section are around this one specific topic, and I need to refresh my, my content there. But maybe I don't need a full course where a large yeah. percentage of that course is content-related, and I just need to focus on 
test skills and taking practice yeah. exams. And so there's, there's a, a way to think about it in that sense as well. Yeah, I definitely had that issue the second time around and the first where I would switch my answer. And that was so annoying because I got some of the next step material and it would tell me, you switched your answer to this many questions. You had it right the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Those, those blueprint analytics are really good on the back end for that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's just, I was just, I don't know how much to kind of invest. Obviously I wanted this to be the last time, hopefully that if I did have to take it and just, that's where I was willing to pay the, for the course, I guess. Yeah. But Maybe that's not needed. So. Yeah, it, it, it may be needed. I don't know. It, it depends on yeah. you and just some self-reflection yeah. analysis. And they have the new sure. live online course, which I don't know if you've seen that, to where it's it's not just all of the content where you get office hours too, where they go over the content, but the live online course now is it's like 16 lectures, two and a half hours each. So it's like 40 hours or something of lectures mm -hmm. where you do all of the content review before the lecture and then they kind of teach and go, okay, with this set of content, this is how it's typically implemented on the MCAT and let's focus on some specific questions that use this sort of knowledge, but actually yeah. implement it on the MCAT. And that's where a lot of students lack the, the analysis and critical thinking to go, okay, I, I've memorized all of the am amino acids, but the MCAT always asks it in this one specific way that I can never kind of translate yeah. that in my head and the live sure. online course, those, those lectures can now do that for you with you. Awesome. Yeah. That would be helpful. Yeah. The MCAT, such a beast, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. Well, hopefully, hopefully, right. Hopefully March 15th rolls around and you get that acceptance letter. The question right, well. potentially is being on a wait list, where in your application, and, and I know you had some calls with schools and they say MCAT, 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 but it's almost always <laughs> like, again, they yeah. gave you the interview. So they were yeah. happy enough with your MCAT score. No. Are you lacking in clinical experience? Are you lacking in shadowing? What have you been doing since your interviews or since your application? that maybe potentially you can update the schools on to say, hey, I know, like, even though I interviewed, I know this one area of my yeah. application is a little weak, but here's what I've been doing to work on it. Do you have any sort of sense yeah. of, of an opportunity for that? So I have a ton of clinical experience. I actually, this is my second time applying. So the first cycle that I applied, I got zero interviews and I was so naive applying. I barely had any clinical experience. My pre-med advisors didn't really help me. They were like, oh, you're totally fine. You've had some clinical volunteering. You should apply. <laughs> and that not, I don't recommend that. Second yeah. time around, I started scribing. Um, so that's what I've been doing. Um, I'm in, I'm scribing right now. But right. Um, done a ton of shadowing. I've actually sent two updates to schools. Um, and three of them don't take updates. And yeah. so... Um, one school I was talking to a student and she said, if you get waitlisted, um, try and reach out to alumni in your area to see if you can shadow alumni and make an effort to that school. So I've already done that. Um, so that's where, yeah, I'm not lacking in clinical experience. I don't think I've done a ton of shadowing. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. I did research in undergrad. I know you always say you don't need research, but I've done that. I'm volunteering once a week. So that's where I'm like at a loss of kind of what else to do. So, yeah, it's, it sounds like you've put in the work. So uh, yeah, may, maybe it is really just MCAT, MCAT, MCAT. Um, unfortunately, I know. Yeah. It's not my favorite, but. <laughs> oh, fingers crossed that the, the wait list moves and you get off of that. I know just so late. They said it could be as late as June. I'm like, Oh my goodness. <laughs> Yeah, and, and there's even movement now with the new traffic rules from the WMC where school yeah. could start and you get a call from another school yeah. saying, hey, we have a spot. Do you want to come? And you're like, ah, I don't know what I should do. I know, because you have to look for a place to live and all that kind of stuff. So, yep. Yeah. Although sil silver lining potentially with COVID is because a lot of stuff is virtual now. It's like, well, I could I could get off of a wait list yeah. a week into school and not really miss a ton because I can do it all That's online. That is very true. I didn't think about that. Yeah. All right. Well, good luck to you. Any other questions? Um, I think that's about it. 
Um, I guess I have kind of one question. Um, how much do you recommend like changing if I kept my activities, obviously kind of mostly the same, I've expanded a little bit. Is it frowned upon to use the same descriptions for the activities for the same? I don't think that people would go back and say, Oh, you said the same thing last year for this activity. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. is that frowned upon at all? Or should uh, I my recommendation, I think everyone's recommendation is always change as much as possible. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it's hard, especially for activities like research in undergrad that you haven't done in forever. It's like, what new thing can I say? <laughs> I already said it. So things like yeah. that potentially may be for the most part the same. Tweak as much yeah. as you can. Uh, but yeah, it, the, the, at, at the end of the day, the, the, the question is, is there something, if you say it just a little bit different, Will it connect yeah. with the right person that all of a sudden that's what gets you maybe a different interview next cycle? That's the topic of conversation during your next yeah. interview. And so there, you, you never want to miss opportunities like that. Yeah, that's one thing I didn't really see before I applied is kind of telling your story throughout those or those activities. Obviously, I did in the personal statement. The secondaries, yeah. I definitely use that advice, but I kind of heard that advice after I submit my primary. So I, I guess I could tell more of a story in my, yeah in my primary and the activities. But yeah, my, my new book coming out, the pre-med playbook guide to the medical school application process has a bunch of advice and, and thoughts and examples of descriptions. So hopefully okay. that'll help people kind of continue the trend. I, I think the, the, experience descriptions, that activity section on the application is one of the biggest missed opportunities for continuing to tell the story of who you are and what you've been doing. So many students just focus on like, here's a list of everything I've done and here's why it's going to make me a good physician. And that's yeah. just, that doesn't help me connect with who you are. Yeah. I was guilty of that. Definitely. <laughs> you like, oh. and everyone else. Yeah. I unfortunately a great position and then i hear your advice i'm like i understand where he's coming from now but mm -hmm. it's like i am just impressed them and it just doesn't it obviously didn't go well the first time so didn't get any interviews the first cycle but yeah definitely helped all but yeah right. i think that was it that was my all my questions hopefully i don't have to retake it but <laughs> hopefully not well good luck to you thank you so much <laughs>